Crickets music. And what else? What else? What else do I need? What's up, Aaliyah? How's it going? So I should probably get rid of this thing. There you go, so I can see what's happening. What's up, James? How's it going? So we have this tank, and I have it, uh, I have the graphics for the for the under, for the reveal, for whatever you want to call it, I call it for the under, for the undertone, for the underpainting, the underpainting is probably the best way to describe it, so when you light it up, uh, this is what we're going to paint today, is what's going to pop through, um, so what I've decided to do too, uh, is to do the underpainting, and we have all the graphics and stuff already all laid out around, um, then I'm going to clear it, and then we'll let that dry up and cure it, and then we're gonna prep it again, like cut it back, and then we're gonna add the, the graphics that'll go over this. <coughs> and that'll flatten out the, the graphics and the airbrushing and everything, so it'll be really nice. Painting cups, nice, nice. I feel like this camera's way too low here. There you go, let's see. What does that look like? I'm all up in the way of the other camera. Oh, that's better. Cool. So I don't know how well you can tell, but it's like a, a demon face, and then she has her, uh, like a demon wing right here. And what we're going to do is uh, kind of making some skulls and stuff here on the background. And then uh, I put some fire. So I cut out a little fire stencil. We're gonna use this little fire stencil to go around and kind of make some little fire design around the back side of it. And then again, when you light it up, we're trying to block the light so that when, when it lights up like it is right now, um, you know, it's gonna really pop through um, the second, the overpainting. Underpainting, overpainting. So that's what we're going for today. And I could uh, do that, right? So you can see what it looks like and then we can light it up so pretty standard pretty simples and we'll unhook that other side for now until we can do get to it I could have it on blinking mode too but um, I think for now I just want it lit and then once I kind of get it more more in a finished state I'll kind of set it to blinking to make sure it kind of blending it in really good and uh, yeah, we'll go from there. So here I'm gonna take some of my special mixed colors. Your first big show tomorrow? What do you mean by your first big show? What are you doing? Like a car show or something? What do you mean? What do you mean, James? Yeah. 
so what we're gonna do, I'm just gonna kind of test this color real quick on the background to make sure it matches in pretty good. I mean, that's, that's pretty, pretty darn good. Alrighty, now we can turn it on. See and what you can do, see when that spot pops in with the light. So all we're gonna do right here is I'm gonna just add some little uh, skeleton friends kind of going around the background here. And we can start with that little dot I just painted, and we'll turn him into the first little skeleton right here. So we'll do a little skull. All right. So what I did too is I mixed up this color and I used uh, some of the sealers to do it so so that it'd just be a little bit more potent blocking the light without having to go over so much. Let me, uh, let me zoom you guys in. What's up break a leg? How's it going? Oh. It's actually as zoomed as I can get without using the, the super zoom or whatever. Um, yeah, we're just gonna kinda piece this all in right here. So we'll probably do like one little skeleton friend here. We'll put his little skeleton in there, get his jaw and everything, and then we'll probably put one, you know, maybe just poking in over here. We do want to leave space for the flames, and then back here I'll probably just put flames. So we'll probably just put two little skeletons. Maybe we'll put a little skull back over here or something. And this is all before we actually get to the, the demon that's taped off. Tank time, yep, this is the tank. So I'm going to do this one on live stream. Like I was saying earlier, I'm going to do all the, the underpaintings and then I'm going to clear it and then cut it back and then we'll do all the overpaintings, you know, so the whole thing is that it's going to be a demon or it's going to be an angel, right? And then when you light up the Lumen lore, the demon side of it will, will kind of shine through. So what you're seeing right now, if I do this, see how it pretty much disappears into the background. You can barely see it right there, just because of the shadow. But when you light it up, you see how that pops in, boom, off, on, boom. And so when we lay the overpainting, it'll hide a lot of this stuff. Um, and yeah. Fix the roof and remove the tree. Nice. Nice. Oh yeah, putting in work over there.
gonna do this uh, arm here. <laughs> that came out beautiful. Uh, I love it. <laughs> Alright, I'm just gonna bring the shadow going around here. What's up, brush strokes? First car show, huh? Oh, James, I missed your other message. The town is a big. Uh, nice, dude, nice. Good luck. It's always a good way to get out there, it's in your community.
Are you good after the hospital? I'm doing better today. Um, thank you for asking. Um, yeah. I kind of been seeing a doctor since last Monday. And, um, <clears throat> it all culminated, uh, a visit to the ER. Uh, and then I ended up visiting, uh, you know, a specialist yesterday um, and I just I got placed on some antibiotics I gave I got a shot of antibiotics and then got a prescription for antibiotics and I should be all right I should be all right so Hola, Ginaldo. I like the bird. Looks great. The bird. Oh. <laughs> Thanks, Ron. Um, so, I don't know. Now I don't know what to do with this guy's hand, though. See, I could put his hand coming up, but I guess I could just make it a hand. so much damn work into this bike, man. From the prep to now is still a lot of work. dying doing half of it. <laughs> uh, I kept telling myself, yeah, I'll, I'll do this and then I'll go live and then, man, by the time I was doing whatever I was doing, I'd be so much in pain. So that's, that's why I wasn't going live or doing anything. <clears throat> but we're back, we're good. Hopefully we're good. We'll see. <laughs> so there's that. So there is a pinstripe uh, blocked off there at the very end, so the reason I want to go around the edge is to pronounce that pinstripe. And once I finish this, I could uh, kind of unmask it and show you guys. So we have all of this in the background. Can maybe even throw some little skulls up in here, just some little tiny ones. color I mixed up works really good so I could spray it so thin like this and it still blocks the light. Just a little, little skull back there hidden in there. There's like some, some smoke or something here. Maybe another little 
guy over here somewhere. See how it disappears into the background there. So this is what the whole underpainting would be. We're, right, we're going to do some more little skull guys kind of over here and stuff. And then I'm going to bring some fire in. So it's going to be like a background of hell. And then we have a demon here masked off that we're going to get to. That'll be like the main focus point. So this is just kind of the background I'm working on. And then on the overpainting, um, what I'm going to do is only bring in clouds. So it's going to be like nice blue clouds. So when the bike's not lit... It's just going to look like it has a nice angel on the side, and we're going to have her angel wing and everything with the nice soft feathers, and then we're going to have a nice clouds, right? And then when you light it, right, when you hit that light, boom, at night, um, and then you'll get the hell side, you know, when it, it turns out your angel was really a, a demon in disguise. Oh, no. And so what I've done is just cut out this little flame stencil, um, and this is just going to make it easy to get some flames back in here. We don't really need any. There's I. I don't want to experiment trying to get real flames on here. Um, because I haven't done that. I need to make a panel that I could kind of play with and try to do some real fire, some realistic fire. But I figured like this for now would be pretty good. I'm just gonna lay it in, you know, little by little. See. Boom start bringing that around and so it doesn't look all the same all the way through I'm also gonna just kind of wipe it off real quick I'm flip it over bring some of these other ones in here Boom, son! And just throw a little bit in there to hide that in. It's like barely even noticeable. Boom. Fill in this little space, just do a little fire over here, just to kind of blend all this in. What's up, Chris? How's it going, man? Que pasa, primo? Que onda? Que dices? Que me cuentas? Que de nuevo? <laughs> Bam, son, where'd you find this? The streets. The, the <laughs> no, I he goes, Damn, son, this is from the streets. <laughs> Bam, son. Where'd you find this? 
the, 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 the hood. Perfect. I don't know why those stupid parts of the mixtapes get stuck in my head, but that is that is literally the part that I'm like, yeah, I dig that guy. Whoever does those voiceovers, you the real champ. That's all I gotta say. You the real goat, son. <laughs> that's all. Like most of the mixtapes I ever fucking listen to, them. out of all of them, that's all I've ever taken away from him. Bam, son, where'd you find this? That's hot. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Fresh from the streets. It's like, oh shit. Oh shit. want to hit that edge so that we can pronounce the pinstripe that's going to be visible only when you light it. You always make us laugh, York. I got to make myself laugh too, so it's all about entertainment and it works both ways. Like, don't think that just because I'm the one live, you can't entertain me. Like, that's not even... That doesn't even make sense because if you put some jokes in the chat, like that's way more entertaining than me sitting here by myself or what I'd normally do is just have a, no a movie going or like, you know, Ancient Aliens or Rick and Morty or some shit, you know, and I'm watching that and, and that's where I'm at. So it's just nice, like both ways entertainment, Thomas. And that's why I always enjoy doing the lives. Honestly, I need to, I need to actually like uh, sit down and uh, record some videos and do some editing and stuff and uh, make something nice for myself and for the channel uh, because I have been slacking on that. Uh, but I, I was dealing with my my body there for a second and then uh, I kind of have to get this bike out of here. This, there's a long story behind this bike. Um, and all I gotta say is, I'm basically not making a dollar off of any of it, so. And, uh, which I was cool with, because of the person I was doing it for, you know, I was like, oh, that's fine, you know, we're kind of doing a trade-off deal. But, uh, I don't know. I felt like I was, I was pretty upfront from the beginning that I wanted to use the bike for, like, marketing and put... You know, not like really big my logo, but I wanted to put the logo on there. So anytime anybody put, took pictures or video of the bike, um, again, because unlike most jobs that I paint, actually, unlike a hundred percent jobs that I've ever painted, this bike lights up. <laughs> and I don't know about you guys. I don't know how many of you guys have ever seen a bike that lights up. You know, and it's gonna be, you know, it's probably gonna get a lot of attention. So I just wanted to make sure that my logo is on there so that. You know, some of that attention can come this way, so now I'm not allowed to put the logo on it, which I'm really upset about. And then, uh, yeah, th th there's more to than that still, but, like, that's kind of what started everything with this bike. Um, and, yeah, now I'm just kind of... I'm just kind of doing my best to finish my job and represent myself the best way I can which is by finishing my part of the deal and doing it right. Even if, you know, even if it's going unappreciated or whatever. That's pretty much all I got to say about that. I'm taking it as a learning experience, the whole thing, like doing the loom lore and then the graphics over and everything is very interesting, but, you know, kind of sucks I'm not going to be able to, you know, I'm not going to get the, the attention from it, which is more than likely how that'll go. <sighs> Ugh. 
asked the girl the other day if she tilts her head to the left or the right when she's eating a taco. <laughs> what? <laughs> that is a that is a very serious question, sir. What was her response? I'm looking for my blade. <laughs> what was her response to that? <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh fucking Chris I was pretty good I was pretty good I need my blade I just had the blade where did I do with the blade Peel this first section back right here of the wing. Just gotta make sure I peel off all of that FBS gold mask. <sighs> That's freaking funny, Chris. <laughs> Alright, so I'm just gonna bring in the kind of her wings first. Now we're kind of going for more like a dragon wings or like a reptile type wings. I don't. Do we have any reptiles alive that have wings nowadays? You know how they say dinosaurs had like wings, but they were reptiles. Or, or did they change that now? Now is it a bird? Was it a bird dinosaur? I don't know. Do we have any reptiles though that have wings like this? Sure to texture it in. Because again, the, the, the other stuff we did that was kind of the background. This is going to be the main, obviously, kind of like the main focal point. It's just kind of like an off shade of gray. It almost looks gray if you're not looking at it too good. But move on to this next section here. <laughs> Chris busted. Uh, saludos, Hugo. Ya no haces videos en español. Uh, no, la verdad. La verdad es que casi ni hago videos, uh, <laughs> so, so casi puros live streams, y, la, y pues si llegas en el live stream y me hablas en español, entonces te contesto en español, pero casi los todos que me hablan a mí so, hablan en inglés, pero saludos hermano, y ahí, ahí a la otra a ver si hago un video, lo, también lo hago en español, ok? <laughs> Ah, te, tengo un canal también en español, uh, se llama Aerografía Mike, y ahí puedes ir a suscribirte y ahí, ahí puedo, pues cuando ya se hagan más suscriptores voy a empezar a poner más videos en español allá, pero necesito saber pues cuántos son para poder, si vale la pena hacer tantos videos y tomar el tiempo o, o si es algo nomás así para hacer los videos nomás. Um, más rápidamente
the FPS gold in your plotter by hand. By, um, we can, I almost said by hand like a fucking idiot. No, I cut him on the plotter. So the reason I had to use the plotter too is because I, you know, I'm going to paint him to match on both sides, right? Um, and the overpainting, so I also have, I made the graphic for the overpainting. The overpainting has to line up and match with the underpainting, right? So I have a woman's face and her angel wings and stuff that we're going to put on after I, you know, after I finish all this and I clear it and cut it back and everything, then we'll add the woman's face that'll go over and you won't be able to see any of this. So. Scam likely. <laughs> um, so th that's kind of the whole thing. So that they both have to be the same size and they have to match. So the only way I could do that is with the plotter. Like I could do it with paper and stuff, but man, that'd be a lot more work than I really need to be doing right now. kind of a, a little bit of a process to achieve this look I'm going for here. Alright, there you go. But it'll all become more apparent as um, when we come back live again because I'm going to do this and then maybe we'll even do the other side here on live but then I'll come back in, uh, in a few days or four days realistically like four days um, and we'll do the other side I'll probably have another live stream before then I'm just before we come back on this it'll be a little bit because I'm gonna have to clear it and then we're gonna have to cut it back like I said and then um, and then we could go through and add the overpainting and then it's gonna be a little bit more obvious as to what we're doing so right here look all I'm peeling back is that section of kind of the, the bone of the wings and you can kind of see how it's like popped out because it's it's lit up all the way there. Boom! And all I gotta do is go in here and shade that in. So it's kind of a yeah. Um, Right on, Alexis. Thank you for dropping in. Arizona, that's cool. Well, actually, Arizona is not cool. It is hot as balls probably right now. <laughs> Arizona's hot. It's hot. You gotta do the Will Smith. It's hot. That's hot. Oh, that's hot. Oh. Oh, that's hot. <laughs> Just coming in here, shading these in a little bit. Nothing too, too crazy here. So yeah, this is kind of, um, this is the part that's going to shine through when we um, light it up, if that makes any sense. I don't know if you were here when we did the little, the little running guy with the spray gun. I have him right over there. I can show you in a second, but um, how we did his skeleton how you can only see his skeleton when it's lit. It's lit, boy. Um, that's kind of what I'm, what I'm referring to. Some little D 
detail on these little horns here. I like how, it, because of this light, you can see it because the light's like sideways. <laughs> it's funny. Cool. So then we're gonna move on to over here. And we'll start with kind of the back of the head here. I'm trying to find a good spot to start peeling. Get ahead of myself. I'll do something here. I need to peel the eyes. And the inside of the mouth here. I think this is going to end up coming off with a bunch of teeth attached to it. So it's just so small. Back to the nose. This part in there real quick. We need to get you a ceramic blade. Why? What's what's with the ceramic blade? What's the secret, man? What's the secret?
this up now. No scratches when you peel away the tape. What's up? Oh, thank you, Ron. Um, no scratches. Oh, yeah. I don't. I don't usually dig in with my blade like that. So I don't leave scratches as it is. But if it's even more fine, you won't leave even more scratches. I guess that's cool. I'd be interested. Alrighty. So now you can see there we have. Um, Old demon face exposed there. Boom. <clears throat> now how do we do a demon ear? Oh, we just give it a hole. A hole with a little flap. demon so we want it to look fucked up crazy so we ain't trying to make a pretty demon It's hot. Big heat wave won't let me airbrush. Just been trying to stay cool. Ooh, yeah. A heat a heat wave in Arizona. What the hell is that even like? That can't be good no matter what. So 
At this point, I think we can remove the teeth. That looks pretty good. <laughs> Does that look pretty demon-y? I don't know. I'm not the best demon person. I should have consulted with Jesse before I started this. <laughs> <It's> like, <clears throat> Jesse Madera. <clears throat> what? What? <laughs> it looks cool, huh? Thank you, babe. Looking pretty good, I think. It's pretty cool considering that this is just the underpainting. Like, there's still so, like, the, the top part, you know, which is really what's going to make it all look good. The angel. And like look at the size of this thing like it's it's basically my forearm okay like from the top to the bottom of my forearm and then going down like that. <laughs> it's not very big so we're working with what we got though we're working with what we got that's what he said have to go piece by piece on these horns. It would totally be worth it. It'd totally be worth it because it's still my name behind this stupid bike.
I could still use it for pictures. And promote it my own way. Cold ass Coca Cola. What? That's the last thing you want to drink when you want to stay hydrated. Coca Cola. What? You want to be drinking water. Some cold ass fucking freezing water. Mmm. I think it's time we, we, like I like a good soda every now and then, right? Like I'm not gonna sit here and say don't drink soda, but I think we all need to have a real talk about this soda shit, man. <laughs> if you haven't had to talk about soda, Time for an intervention. <laughs> I feel like I have to have an intervention with myself every time I grab one. I'm like, why are you doing this to yourself, bro? Why are you doing this? You drink this today, tomorrow you cry about how fat you are. Stop it, bro. Just stop it. <laughs> Three cases of water in your car. Yeah, you should have taken them down. I have a case of water right here, though. I'm good. What would it be like right now trying to paint this without this? Basically impossible. I <laughs> if if I didn't have the Lumilor on. That's wild. I can't I can't even I can't wait to buy more Lumilor. Used all my Lumilor supplies on this stupid bike. Water sits in my car right now. It's almost at boiling point. Beer is the answer. Cold and refreshing. Yes, sir. And you get your carbohydrates in. Mm-hmm. You don't even have to eat. You just sit around and drink all day. You'll be good. Do a little exercise, you know. Like, damn, that dude's fucking ripped. He's also drunk off his ass, but I mean, he, look at him.
<laughs> Boiling water in the car, though. That's that's some sanitary shit right there, bro. That water was been repurified, purified, purified water, double pure. <laughs> Does that make it holy water, you know, if it's like double purified? Alright, now let's try to get all this extra gold mask off of there. Which is honestly probably easier to see. Yeah, it's a lot easier to see with this off. go that's kind of what the side looks like with just the luminor and you can kind of see the impression of it right a little bit but once we do the artwork over it's going to really cover it and blend it all in and then when you light it up this is going to pop through over the other artwork um, and i could unmask this side since we're going to clear it at this point well not not right this second but Hopefully later today I get to make it to clearing these, if not tomorrow morning, after I finish all the artwork on all the pieces. <clears throat> and then like I said, we'll, I'm going to cut it back, and we'll come back in a few days, and we'll do the overpainting, and then we'll do the final top coat over that. So... See here, the uh, when you look at it like this, this section goes all the way up. But when you light it, there's a hidden pinstripe. Then there's a pinstripe that goes dark. So I wish I could. Let me turn off that light real quick to show you guys uh, the whole the whole shebang here of what's actually happening. Because there's there's so much tape work that it's been a little bit ridiculous. Um, so yeah. No, I'm, I'm not using the Micron today. This, uh, this paint here is a little bit thicker, so I've been using, I think, what is this, the, the Eclipse here to spray the, what we're spraying today. So here's, here's what I'm talking about. Uh, let me, let me go to this camera so I can see what I'm doing. There you go. So if I zoom you out a little bit. Look at that shit. Oh, that looks so awesome. Oh, damn it. That looks really good. Okay, anyway. Um, let me get the light on my phone. So, you see that? How it kind of all disappears? And when you look closely here, there's one pinstripe. Zoom you guys in. See, there's one silver pinstripe with candy over it. There's a blue pinstripe. That just lights up blue you see that that candied pinstripe with the silver it turns into a black pinstripe with the luminor on and then we also have a, another 1 16th inch pinstripe of just luminor so we have two 1 16th inch on the side this last one is hidden and when i do the top artwork here we're going to bring that top artwork all the way up to that silver pinstripe up here right so it'll be completely hidden and then when i hit the luminor you'll hit the you know, you'll see that extra pinstripe come in as well as the whole designs. Um, and then obviously the whole top of the bike has that blue marbleized effect that you guys probably seen on social media at this point. And you, you can see these edges a little bit. They're not really big. They look big on camera just because they're shiny, but um, that's why we're going to clear it. And then we're going to cut it back smooth. And then we'll come back and do the artwork over this. Pretty cool, huh? Like, it's like you could... You can see it because of the glare, really, but it, if that was all cleared, you couldn't see it. 
but once that sh that comes out right there. So here in this section here, we have one, two, three, four, five pinstripes laid out next to each other there on this top piece. And when the Lumilor comes in, you can see them all except the black pinstripe, which is obviously around the edge. So at nighttime is when this bike is really going to shine the most. And it, I'm really sad that I'm, I'm like putting this much effort and this stuff into it. And uh, I'm not even going to get to get put my logo or my signature or anything like that on it. But look at that. That's just the underpainting. That looks that looks really amazing. I'm, I'm down with that. And then uh, once we put the overpainting of the woman on there, you won't see this. It'll be all just, you know, one one nice graphic of a woman with, you know, an angel wing and some clouds. And then we'll light it up and that, that finger will come in like, fuck you. And ha ha, you know, and yeah. Anyway, moving along, we could, uh, light up the other side, do this other side now. So that's pretty cool, huh? Let me turn the light back on so I can see. And so we're, I'm just working kind of in a dim light and I have the light facing away from what I'm working on so that I could see the Lumilor nice and bright and I could see where I'm concealing and I'm not concealing. But now all we gotta do is do that whole process all over again on this side. I just noticed it looks really crooked for some reason. There you go. Was that pretty sweet or what? I like that. Thank you guys. Great to see you're feeling better for the rest of work. Thanks, thanks Edward. Um, how difficult is to spray? Do you think of doing a limited to turn on how to spray? So, no, I'm probably... There's, um... The truth be told, there's no reason for me to do a Luminor how-to video because there's already some videos out there that are really good. It's including one by Luminor themselves as a company um, that explains it way better and they have already all the freaking, you know, the, the graphics and everything to kind of explain to you the certain steps. Um, but being because it is like something electronic and stuff and you can shock yourself and cause yourself damage as you're spraying it if you're not careful it's not something that I feel comfortable trying to teach over a video I don't want to be responsible for that um, and um, yeah it, it's there's more information that you would need to know that I could then then I could convey over a film um, and yeah, I don't, I don't, I just, I wouldn't feel comfortable doing that. That's just my, my opinion. Now, spraying, like showing you how to do the artwork over Luminor, um, that's, that's kind of where I'm at, right? So if you, like, if you want to learn how to do Luminor, the easiest and the, probably the best way to learn is to actually go and take, like, the class at the Airbrush Rendezvous or the Airbrush Circus that comes up, coming up. I don't know if they have a Luminor class or not, um, <clears throat> but if you ever see one of those classes come up, um, that would be the best way to learn. And the reason I say the class is because when you pay for the class, uh, you get the class in itself and they walk you through the whole setup process. Um, I walked away with two panels that were lit, um, an inverter, you know, a whole setup basically to light stuff up. and. Um, I don't know if you've ever looked at Lumilor, but even like just a two ounce kit um, is like two hundred dollars, you know. So yeah, and you don't really get that much with it. You get a small, tiny little panel with it, and and everything. So to me, it's it was a no brainer when I seen how much the class was, and how much Lumilor is, and in order to not spend money or waste money, um, wasting material trying to learn. Um, you know, it's it's probably more beneficial for you to take the class and like I said there's way more than I could teach over a video 
Like, you got to be able to use a multimeter. You have to know how to use a big spray gun. Um, yeah, I don't know. There's, there's just a lot of stuff. And honestly, without being in the room with the person spraying it, it's gonna, it's something that's gonna be hard to teach. And like I said, Lumilor has probably the best video if, if you're really interested in, and you just don't can't take the class for whatever reason. Um, go and watch. You know, just type in Lumilor.com. Look, I mean Lumilor on YouTube. They have a YouTube channel. Go over to their YouTube channel, check it out. And uh, if that doesn't satisfy you you could um, always just type in uh, what is it electro luminescent paint into the search bar and there's a lot of people that have already taken this same technology and kind of uh, try to do crazy stuff there's a video I seen where a guy made like um, basically like a uh, he tried to make like an LCD screen out of Lumilor to see if it was possible and I mean it's technically possible but you know he gives in the video, he gives really good reasons of why it's not the best way to do it. So, <laughs> But yeah, that, that's what I would say. is like Just like I took the class, um, that's what I would recommend you do if you're interested in Luminor. I mean, that's why I did it. I felt like that was the best way to learn. And that's what I would recommend. And th there really is just too much to over a little video it's making you miss work but it's worth it <laughs> no Rod go to work man you could always catch the replay I appreciate you watching for sure but please please take care of your of your life first I wire up my LCD grow lights. It's the same theory. Uh, yeah, kinda. Yeah, yeah, I mean, if you know how to wire up some lights, you, you pretty much, you know how to do some Lumilor. There's some extra added steps. Obviously, you don't have to know how to spray because you're not just, it's not just about wiring the Lumilor. You actually have to apply it, you know? Whereas LED lights, you know, they usually already come in a strip or something, unless you're like making your own LED strips or something. But, um, you know, you have to make the light before you can make it light up. It's kind of where it's at. But if you're interested in just playing with Lumilor, they do sell pre-lit panels. So, right on, Edward Lane. We'll see you later, man. Very talented. Thank you, thank you, sir. Have a good day at work. Um, you can always catch the replay like I was telling Ron. <laughs> so, thank you, thank you for stopping in. And yeah, have a good day at work. But yeah, definitely, if, if you're into electronics and stuff, um, Lumilor is going to be something that you're going to like to do. One thing I've been really thinking of would be really cool too, and I wish I knew like some computer computer builder guy so that we could work on it together or something. But it would be awesome to do like a a computer build that lit up, you know. Like nowadays they have all those video games where the, the guns like light up and do these effects and stuff. So it'd be cool to do like a, a computer system with some sort of theme where we can make parts of it light up or like the, you know the whole thing. Like the inside of the case, because nowadays they put the LEDs and all that, you know. But what if we did some Lumilor and made it light up, and then, you know. So I think that would be pretty cool. The side panels, yeah, yeah. The side panels would be dope. I just know like a lot of days, like even my computer case, it's like glass, so you can see the inside, right? So I'm just thinking like, what if the inside, like I have LED lights in my case, but what if it was 
Lumilor instead of LED lights. Haha. <laughs> what PSI do you use for detail work? Right now I'm, I'm probably a little bit over 20. Um, just because this paint's a little thicker. It really just depends on what I'm spraying and you know the thickness of the paint and stuff. So this paint's pretty thick, so I'm keeping the paint the pressure just a little bit higher so that the airbrush can suck it out just a little bit easier. So it really just depends on what you're doing, but it's all going to depend on what you're painting and your reduction of paint and stuff. But usually the more detailed you want to get and the closer you want to get, um, you want to run your paint a little finer and your air pressure a little lower. So that's probably the advice I could give you on that. What's up, Frankie Falcons? How's it going? What's up, Tech Grind? How's it going? Airbrush the guts on the outside. Yeah, you see, now you're getting, now you're getting creative. Yeah. Like one idea that I had too was like, you know how Iron Man has like Jarvis, right? So if you made a Jarvis box and then on the like on the inside, like because obviously it's gonna have the real circuit board, like the real motherboard and stuff. But then you can make like little circuit panels and stuff like that, and, and and just make it look like it's an actual like like a AI box or something, you know, something that has you know more to it, like futuristic. I don't know. There's there's a lot of ideas you can do. Yeah, it would be sick. <laughs> and so the other thing too is that you can make them flash, right? You can make it do this like flashing thing. Now this is just running off of one of these little tiny inverters. They do sell like nicer uh, inverters than this. And then um, they sell ones that make it like do like pulsing and stuff like that. And what you can do is actually lay one field, like one light field, right? Do your designs on that. And then you can lay another light field like around it or, or you know, even on top of it. If you separate it out with some clear, you could lay another field over. And then you could have like a one field flashing over the other. So, yeah, you could have different modes and you could, you know, oh, dude, some of the stuff I've seen the other people achieve already with it is it's the whole reason I'm here. I really do think Lumilor is uh, kind of going to be part of the future. SEMA time. <laughs> Is there a board controlling it? Yeah, so on this one, it's just, like I said, it's just running off of this small little inverter um, that's running to an AC, you know, 12 volt 
adapter over there um, and you have to have the inverter there's no way around it but if you watch other people's videos they found ways around kind of, kind of around having the inverter um, and or ways to control the inverter um, which obviously the easiest way is to run a switch or a relay right and then have it you know you can control the relay or the switch whichever way you want but people have even found ways around that just running it like off of an arduino board and stuff like that and people have really just gotten creative with it um but yeah it's it's definitely going to be interesting here in the future um in the next 20 20 30 years um, to see where it goes and what happens because I do believe there is um, cars right now they might just be prototypes but there's vehicles being planned where the Lumilor is part of the vehicle um, so if that starts to happen they're gonna need Lumilor applicators and fixers to kind of get these vehicles and stuff. And it's really going to take everything to a whole new level at that point. Raspberry Pi, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know, so people have already been playing with it, so that's kind of what got me interested. And like I said, once I seen how much the class was and how much, like, the Lumilor is by itself, like, I definitely didn't want to spend money on it. And then, like, you know, what if it didn't work? What if I made a mistake? And what if it didn't just, like, happen, like, right? Um, yeah, I don't know. I didn't want to take that chance, so I just ended up taking the class. Like I said, it's probably the best value anyway because you end up getting all this stuff and then all the knowledge leaving the class and I know I made some pretty good friends while I was there so you know you never know what could happen worth it for your business yeah yeah <sighs> to be quite honest with you I don't know how much longer <laughs> like well no I shouldn't say it that way because you know I'm I, I like running the business I like having the mics brush and everything but my wife is on this whole we should move to the beach trip which I'm not going to argue against. I'm, I'm down for it. So, like, even though the Mike Express YouTube channel will probably be, you know, forever. And that's just what this channel is called. And that's what it'll always be called now. For a minute there, I did think about changing the channel name and stuff. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I feel like, I don't know. I'd be down to move somewhere and work at somebody else's shop for a while because yeah running running this the whole business and everything it's not everything it's cracked up to me you know so right up Ron we'll see you later man get back to work <laughs> have a good day at work sir yeah I'd be down to work at somebody else's shop is kind of where I'm at I would like to get some good good experience and honestly just working somewhere else more stable would be nice and yeah if we live if I landed a job near the beach somewhere oh my god it'd be like the dream I want to work though that's the other thing about here, right, is that I live kind of out in the middle of nowhere in Colorado. Well, I guess I shouldn't say the middle of nowhere, but 
you know, not in one of the major cities or anything like that. And work's kind of scarce most of the time until I go to those areas. You know, if, I, if I go from here and I go do the Denver market or the Springs market, I do amazing and people love it and stuff. And then I'll pick up some work for a while, you know, hand out cards and stuff. And that's kind of how I do it. But it's like I do have to make those travels and do that. There isn't too much local stuff. Alright, just checking this out, make sure it looks good. So yeah, I, I would like to work somewhere where it's just busy and I could just paint all day and prep stuff and paint and do whatever, you know. Whatever needs done. <coughs> If we got to do some videos out of it and stuff over time, it'd be cool. Pat gains would hire you in a second. I'm not sure where Pat is or who he is. I think I've I've heard that name before. I know I have, but for some reason it's not clicking right now. Does he do T-shirts? Yeah, honestly, if I could land a job somewhere like that, and then I could, uh, even though I have to take myself out there first before I could relocate the family and stuff. Just to see if it's gonna work. And then I'd be down to just, you know. Move. U haul time. Yeah, it'd be awesome to get a job job offer from any of those guys. Like, I'm serious. I'm serious about just, like, moving somewhere. And my wife is, too. Like, she's she's really, since we went to California and she got to spend time at the beach and, and do all that stuff, she's like, oh, man, I really miss it now. And she keeps sharing all this stuff about the beach and wanting to live near the beach and stuff. Yeah, I would, I would probably not turn down a serious job offer somewhere as long as it, you know, it paid good or allowed the, a way to make good enough money to survive and live. Obviously, my, my wife's going to work too, so I'm not, I'm not expecting like no six-figure job or nothing like that, but if I can make a living wage and pay rent and bills and stuff, shoot. I'd give up this dusty little town in a heartbeat, son. Go live near the ocean. I'm sure my wife would too at this point.
So if any of you guys are watching, you need a good, yeah, you need a good secondhand man, you know, just can help you paint, can help you prep, can help you do whatever you need. Also willing to learn. And honestly, a place where I could learn some shit would probably be the better place for me to go. I'm down to work at a t-shirt shop too, if that's what it comes down to. <laughs> Whatever your plans for the future, hope all goes well. Thank you, thank you, Tech Grad. El Paso, huh? Ooh, I'm from El Paso too. I was born in El Paso. Gaines has shops in Florida, nice. Yeah, I mean. I just don't know, I just don't know, man. Gee, we got all the way down to the hip bone on this guy. Look, we got all his bones in there all the way down to his hip. <laughs> Florida has hurricanes. You can't live in paradise and not expect a little bit of crap, you know? <laughs> you gotta take the good with the bad. Getting through the background on this side pretty quick, I feel like. Keep your house standing. <laughs> Well, we just won't live right near the beach. We have to live like separated from the beach a little bit, like I was telling you. Like if we live an hour or two away from the beach, that's fine. All right, so I have to twist this this way so I can actually get the airbrush in there properly.
<laughs> I should have made this guy doing the shocker, you know, like, how does it, how does it, like this, or like this, like this. You have too much talent to work for someone else. You know, it's not even that. I don't... Yes, I'm talented. Does that mean I should... I know how to run a business and, and do it all? Like, no. Also, trying to do it all diminishes a lot from my talent. Because it takes away from me doing painting when I have to do other stuff. So, while I appreciate your comment, I feel like the most talented artists usually have a good team behind them, and that's what I would think. Like, I need somewhere where, you know, I'm I'm gonna be kept busy. I'm gonna, you know, they're gonna be pushed. And I'm gonna be doing cool stuff, and I'm gonna show up to work every day, like proud to be there, and just have an awesome time every day, just painting and doing cool stuff along other artists or other people that also want to push themselves and just do amazing stuff you know that's kind of where i'm at it's like i'm just i don't know i don't know how to explain it man You guys understand, right? You guys get it? <sighs> humble one. I, I guess. I don't know. Call it being humble. I would say it's just me being smart and realizing just how much time and energy I've wasted over the years trying to do everything myself when, uh, you know, it's not always that way. And, and, you know, now that I have my wife and and the few times that I've been able to work with other people, it's it's been amazing. And, you know, like I said, my wife's been helping me out and backing me up with a lot of stuff. And, you know, it's just awesome to have that support. And it would be awesome if that extended into where I work, right? And if I work somewhere where they were willing to support and push and, and have, you know, work for me to do and appreciate what I'm doing, you know, it would just be awesome. I don't know. I don't even know if that place exists. I'm, I'm probably just asking for a fairy tale, so it's all good. There you go, get the background in there. I'm just gonna make sure to hit the edge. One more time, just around that edge. Boom. You know, and, and honestly, the, the best times I've had airbrushing have been working for somebody else. When I worked at the airbrush store in Houston, that was an awesome time. When I worked at Reverb in Colorado Springs, that was also really cool. You know, because you get to see different, you know, just different vibe. You have people working with you and stuff. It's it's nice. You know, as opposed to being cooped up in here by myself all day. and It would just be nice to have a, an actual, I don't know. Yeah, anyway, that's that's my rant about that. That's my that's how I feel right now. I think I've said it before, but if there was a real job out there, I definitely would not would not shy away. Honestly, somewhere where I could work alongside another artist or like somebody that's already really good and established, you know, and they, that would probably be the best way, but I don't know 
if that's even a real thing or if I'm just like asking for something that doesn't exist. Anyway, what are you guys working on today? What is everybody else up to? I always end up being the one ranting around by myself, just talking smack. Feels like this is what I'm doing, it's just talking crap. <laughs> are there a lot of artists in Colorado? Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of artists everywhere. Um, a lot of airbrush artists. Um, probably not that many. But again, the main reason would be is that there's not that much work. And you know, I catch I catch quite a bit of work, um, local like Colorado work. But I know, you know, between all of us that's around here in Colorado, we're all probably catching, a, you know. A little bit at a time. And it comes in waves. I don't know. It all just depends. But um, yeah, I mean, there's there's a few of us around. Artist-wise, I mean, there's there's lo there's going to be lots of artists anywhere you go. Airbrush artists in general. Uh, I mean, there's. That I know of, there's not that many. Like that, that are good on, on a, you know. On this kind of level, I, I wouldn't say that, that there's that many. There's probably three or four. Mike Learn lives in Colorado, so Mike Learn obviously does airbrushing. Though I don't know if he takes on... I think he still does. I don't see why he wouldn't, but... I know he does a lot of uh, guitars and stuff, so I don't know if he still does a lot of, like, this kind of stuff. But... I know he does guitars. I know he's busy with his, like, uh... His band and stuff. So... And then, other than Mike Learn, I know that there's a couple other air airbrush guys... But, um, yeah, most of the other people I know, like, there's pinstripers, there's a few custom painters, you know, like, I've worked with a few custom painters that do really nice paint jobs, but they're just not very good at, with an airbrush, you know, to get very nice details in there. Um, but I don't consider them, like, airbrush artists, because they're, they're painters, they do paint jobs, and then they just hire me to do the airbrushing. I don't know. I don't know, man. There's, there's, there's people around. That's going to be anywhere. Anywhere I go, there's going to be other airbrush people. Not a damn thing sitting here working doing nothing. Oh my god. <laughs> you would be fun to work with. You seem to have a good sense of humor. Yeah, I mean, everywhere I've worked, I've always had a lot of fun with everybody that worked there. I've never worked somewhere and not got along with everybody, so it's kind of that thing. Even when I worked in Houston, in Houston, it's like, you know, people are either going to accept you or, or not, you know. And, 
it was I don't know to me I just showed up started painting and it was just an instant like oh yeah you're pretty good let's you know can you do this for me <laughs> that kind of thing so and when I worked at reverb that was pretty fun I was really young when I worked up there too though but then working the markets and the events and stuff I mean it's just always fun I always just try to make the most out of it because I mean that's all that's all you can do about anything no matter where you work you try to have fun you try to have you know do what you can I don't know at least I do I don't try to my job sucks and it's like well yeah it's probably not gonna get any better if you complain about it so <laughs> going to watch a show see you in a while oh okay, oh my gosh <laughs> <laughs> Don't work too hard over there. Uh, did your mask come from plotter or self cut? So this mask, I cut it on the plotter, like I said. Um, the reason is because we need both sides to match, so we have it on that side and this side. And there's this is only the underpainting, like I've said, um, and the the overpainting that goes over this has to be the exact size and match this painting so that when we lay it over the demon and there's going to be a woman's face that goes over the demon um it has to match up and line up perfectly right including the wing the 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 lady is going to be an angel and she has an angel wing and that wing has to match up with this um so that we get the effect of when we light it up right because this is lit right now it's easy to forget that it's lit up right so we do that you can't see any of it and once we put the overpainting you you won't be uh, see it at all and then when you light it you know this is going to shine through so that's kind of what we're going for so this is just the underpainting and then like in uh probably four or five days um during one of the next live streams or whatever i'll come back and um We'll do the overpainting over this, and then you guys will be able to see the whole effect come together. To me, it's kind of like an x-ray, right? Like how you know when you see an x-ray, but it's not on the light, it just looks black. And then when they put it up on the light, then you can see all the designs and like the, the, the actual x-ray. Um, that's kind of what, what doing this is. It's like I'm doing an x-ray. And um, this is the part that's gonna show up when I light it. But there's gonna be a, a top piece that's not really gonna be there. Um, when we light it we're going to do the top piece in candies so all the light can shine through nice and easy giving us the maximum translucency here um and yeah we'll try to cover all this and you won't be able to see it and then when we hit the light that the woman's face will turn into a demon and you'll have a demon kind of staring back at you so <coughs> what's up udo how's it going Invest in a plotter. Yeah, plotters are, are really, really good for a lot of stuff. So definitely recommend. Like, I've gone through... Well, I shouldn't say I've gone through, but I've had a lot of plotters. I've never actually had any of them break, even in the cheap ones that I've had. Uh, the, the one thing I will say is that usually when you spend more on a plotter is the, the level of detailed cuts you can get starts becoming a little better as well as the reliability of the cuts so i don't know how much you've ever messed with a computer and a plotter but sometimes there's errors and stuff in your cuts and um, some of the nicer plotters won't give you as much errors i personally have a, what is it a silhouette cameo three or four i don't know i think it's a three um and that's what I've been using to cut all these things here. I used to have a Roland back in the day, but 
that actually got left up in my shop in Denver when we closed down. And I thought, I thought my friend Ron was gonna go and collect it, and then he never collected it. And so, yeah, I don't know what happened to that one. It was a really nice rolling plotter, so. <clears throat> Get what you pay for it? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and I don't know what ever happened to that rolling plotter that was there. And we used to cut big old freaking signs for windows and stuff when decals were, were like really popular. Um, the best reference I could give to the time period would be when that little piss guy came around and he was doing like, you know, the piss on the Ford and piss on the Chevy and and all that and people were just putting them on everything those stupid little stickers um that's when we had the rolling plotter <laughs> and it was just we printed out so many stickers for stupid stuff that it was just yeah we were, we were doing all kinds of stuff and that's the reason i know how to use the plotter really good I want to say it was a Dennis the Menace, but I don't think it was Dennis the Menace that was pissing on stuff. He was like peeing. Then it would say like Ford or Toyota or, you know, it'd pee and then it'd have the Raiders logo, like he's peeing on the Raiders logo, that kind of stuff. Oh yeah, we had a lot of fun with that thing. Yeah, the Calvin and Hobbes, that's what it is. Yeah, the Calvin and Hobbes cartoon. It didn't have the, the tiger one. It just had the little kid, though. And uh, he would always be pissing on everything. And I'm pretty sure if you lived in any city, you've probably seen those little stupid stickers and stuff on people's vehicles. And yeah, that, that's when we had the plotter, and it was, it was awesome. And we actually ended I ended up buying a Roland, and, and um, the reason was because at the market where I was working at, there was a guy who did decals, right? And, um, I mean, there's, there's no, I mean, there, I guess there's no way to say it, but I mean, he was Arab, like Arab, Arab, like you couldn't understand what he was saying, Arab. Not to be mean to him or nothing, but, like, that was his main problem with business is that he actually couldn't communicate with customers a lot of time. So I ended up helping him because I ended up like um, setting up next to him a few times. And to his credit, he was trying to learn. Like he was doing like some some like English classes and like he added books. He was trying to learn English really good. So I ended up helping him with customers and stuff and teaching him how to like you know like what people were saying and stuff. And especially translating from Spanish, because we had a lot of, like, Mexican people come to the market and stuff. And, um, but yeah, he ended up being a really nice guy, and, uh, he ended up, like, telling me about a deal one time, about how I could get a Roland for pretty cheap. And, uh, yeah, it was, I ended up paying, like, 300, uh, $300, it's like 800 bucks, and, um, he ended up giving me the 300 three hundred dollars and said to use it towards my my rolling machine for helping him with the customers and stuff and uh so that's how i ended up with the rolling and it was like like ridiculously cheap because it was like a three thousand dollar machine or something stupid and i ended up getting it for 800 bucks or 500 bucks because he he gave me the three hundred dollars and yeah yeah he, he he didn't teach me how to use the plotter but he did tell me like this is a good one and then he's sh you know he's showing me the programs to use he showed me where to get the initial images that we were doing and um, yeah he was a lot of help so yeah like the back windows of trucks you see all them stickers yeah exactly well nowadays you see this those plotters everywhere right but before it was like man those plotters you know they were expensive, so you didn't, like, not everybody had them. 
and then having a computer to run it and everything like people didn't it was not as common as it is now that's the best way to put it yeah for helping that guy I ended up you know getting my hands on that Roland that we ended up losing in that shop when we closed down the shop and nobody ended up collecting it so the, the landlord probably went in there and found himself a nice plotter I don't know where it went I was in Houston by the time I found out that nobody had collected the plotter Now fiber lasers are a thing. I know, stuff is getting wild now, bro. Like, I have a laser here, a laser cutter, engraver. And I'm just, I just, I was doing something out the other day. I was like, I can't believe I have a fucking laser in here. Like, this is wild. Like, you know. The future is here for sure. You talk as, as a kid, you're like, I want to have a laser when I grow up. Bro, I have the fucking laser. I grew up properly. <laughs> I did growing up the right way. I fucking bought a laser. Uh, probably the next thing I want to get though is a 3D printer. Just because I have some ideas for some airbrush attachments and tools and stuff that I could uh, make. I don't know if I'll sell them or just put the design out, but probably do both. Put the design out in case you have one, and then if you don't have, a, you know, a 3D printer, then I could just make you one and send it out to you. You have a cameo and haven't used it since you got your laser. <laughs> I've pretty much, I've been the same. The only reason I fired up the cameo was to, has been to cut up the gold mask. Because you can cut the gold mask on the laser. I just feel like the cameo does a little bit better job of it and it's easier. Because um, I already have the stick pads and stuff to stick the, the gold mask onto and stuff. So it's just easy, but... For sure, once you get what it does, it's just... Like, I made nice stuff for people and stuff. Clean cuts, yep, yep. The Cricket Air 2. Nice. Alright, so now we gotta start again. And we're almost wrapping it up on these. Inside. Give me a drink of water, give me some food, and then I'll come back here and do the fenders and get them cleared up and we'll come back in a few days. What's up, Simone? Nice air assist, huh? That's cool.
¿Cuál hay recomendaciones recomendadas comprar Pache Talon o Aguara HPCS? Pues para decirte así que el Talon es uno de los aerógrafos peores que he probado en mi vida. Y el Aiwara HPCS es uno de los mejores aerógrafos que he probado en mi vida. So, ay, tú, 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 tú puedes dar tu propio uh, recomendaje ahí. El Pache Talon sirve, sirve más o menos, ¿verdad? Pero tiene unas cosas, unas funciones que pues nomás no. Si tienes el dinero para comprar en Aiwara, cómprate en Aiwara, que va a ser más, vas a estar más feliz. Almost. I could see the finish line. I could see it. I like how when I'm spraying this, it looks so dark, like I'm spraying black or something, and then I do this, it's like, where did it go? <laughs> this is just too much fun. Every time I do this, I'm just having fun. If I could work somewhere where all I did was play with Lumilore all day, like, oh, that would be sick. <laughs>
off. Just put it sideways. I can see the tapes here. Just take those off. There you go, we got both the sides of the tank. The underpainting is finished. Now we can go to the other side here. Boom, let me turn off this light so we can get the full effect. Oh man. Gotta go all the way around and turn off this light, so. There you go. So there's one side. And there's the other side. And like I said, this is just the underpainting. This is what's going to pop out when we turn on the Lumilure. This is the bottom side. Or the bottom bottom projection we got both sides oh let me unmask this side as well Once you get those pinstripes kind of popped out there, see that pinstripe? That's that's hot. That's hot. That's hot. I need Will Smith. That's hot. Oh, that's hot. <laughs> Bro, them pinstripes is just sick. Light up pinstripes. That's that's gonna be the new meta. The new meta. For Lumilor is those see that oh with the hidden pinstripe boy boy what ah oh, look at that right on loving it we'll see you all day next time man damn that looks cool the only thing I think I needed to go darker on maybe right here there you go let's see the other side yep yep that matches up a little better That's pretty cool. Let me just set these like this. Oh, I said, oh, snappities. For some reason, that that a flashing mode is not as bright though. It's more bright if I do it like this. And like I said, um, we have all these pinstripes kind of going around. I need to clean up a little bit right here, but let me bring out the light bulb. So you see these pinstripes, I need to clean up that little pinstripe, but you can see that last pinstripe's hidden. Right there, you can't see it until the Lumilor is by itself. We also have a blue lit pinstripe next to the white pinstripe over here. And then we have a candied pinstripe here that when the Lumilor is lit, you can see it turns into a black pinstripe all the way around. So, 
Oh my god, I've put so much work just into this tank alone, just to get all these pinstripes and stuff. Really nice, and I don't know how long we've been alive today. Um, let's see how long this is say. Oh, uh, what we're going on? Two hours? Two hours and 15 minutes, something like that. <clears throat> so yeah. There you go, guys. That's it for today. Um, I'm going to go ahead and go get something to eat real quick. I'm going to come back and do the underpainting on the... Um, so behind me, I have the fenders over here. The front fender and the rear fender. Get the artwork and the underpainting done on these. And we're just that much closer to getting it out of here. Just looking at it back and forth, you start noticing things. But anyway, guys, I'll get out of you guys' hair. Hopefully, you guys have a good day. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed that painting over Luminlore. And yeah, we'll see you guys on the next one. <sighs> Shit. Have a good one, guys. Later.